In the previous movie, we added a bevel to this piece of type in order to create a flying logo. If you wanted to deform this shape and have it maybe have a ripple effect or something on it, then you might encounter some issues because the topology or the structure of the object does not really have enough detail on it. We can add detail in various ways in the bevel modifier or in the underlying editable spline. I'll select that object and illustrate the problem you might have by adding a noise modifier. Go up to the Modify panel, and above the Bevel modifier, we're going to add a noise. With Bevel selected, go to the Modifier list, scroll down, and click Noise. And that's added a parametric noise effect. Let's reduce the scale, or the size, to 10, and increase the strength in X, Y, and Z. 5, press Tab, 5 centimeters, press Tab, 5 centimeters, and press Enter. So we can see that there are some issues here. The stronger the effect is, the more evident those issues will be. But if we get in close, for example, on this letter E, we're getting some corrupted geometry. To work around this, we just need to add more detail. The first way we can do this is by increasing the number of extrusion steps. Go to the Bevel modifier, and here we have Segments. Increase that. Now for each one of the extrusion levels, we'll get additional segments. And we can see that here in the perspective view because I have edged faces turned on. Let's give that segments value, let's say, 5. We also want to increase the level of detail along each spline. And we can do that from within the editable spline itself. Go down to the bottom of the modifier stack, select editable spline, and turn on Show End Result. And now if we tumble around or orbit with Alt and Middle Mouse button, we can investigate. We've got this letter K here. We can add more segments there manually and or automatically. If we need to manually add points, we can use the Divide tool. Go into Segment Subobject Mode, and in the Geometry Rollout, scroll down, Near the bottom, you'll see Divide. With a value of 1, we're going to add one point here. Let's turn off Show End Result for a moment so we can see this. Select that segment sub-object, and then click Divide, and you'll add one point. Let's undo that with Control-Z. Let's add maybe four points. Increase that up to four and click Divide. So that's one way to add detail. Now, if we re-enable Show and Result, we can see that we've got more segments there. But we can also increase segmentation automatically by using the Editable Spline Interpolation settings. In the Interpolation Rollout, if we disable Optimize, then we'll get more steps on each straight line segment. And of course, we can also increase the number of steps for each segment. But a value of 6 looks pretty good here now. OK, I'll exit out of sub-object mode just by clicking on segment once again. And finally, we have the level of detail on the front here. And as we can see, the letter E here is still looking a little bit corrupted. To do that, we can go into Bevel and choose a different cap type, either Morph or Grid. To see the effect of this, we want to be able to see all of the triangles within each polygon. By default in Max, those internal triangles are hidden. With the object selected, right-click, go into the Object Properties dialog. In the Display Properties on the left, Disable Edges Only. And when we click OK, we reveal the internal triangles within each polygon. And now this gives us a little bit more clue as to why we're seeing these weird issues here in Morph Cap Type mode. Switch that over to Grid, and now we get a more regular pattern to those internal triangles. All right, very good. So now we can go back up to our noise, and we can turn off edge faces with F4, and we can go into our noise parameters and maybe change the seed to get a different noise effect. And we still do have a few issues here and there, but if we worked on this some more by adding more detail in these straight line segments using that divide tool, we could eventually get this to a point where it would be perfectly smooth everywhere with no shading issues.
That's how to add detail to a bevel modifier.